Do you have an embedded audio player on your website? Do you want to track how visitors are engaging with it? In this video, I will show you exactly how to do that with Google Tag Manager. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to Analytics Mania's YouTube channel, where you can learn Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. There's a bunch of different audio players available in the market that you can embed on your site. And in some cases, that is possible to track with Google Tag Manager. I mean, how visitors are engaging with your player. Are they listening? Are they clicking the play button? And so on. Now, keep in mind that there are some requirements for this tracking method to work. And I will explain them in this video as well. So without further ado, let's dive in. Here I am on a demo website. And at the bottom of the screen, you see an embedded audio player. And if I click play button, it will start playing an audio file. Let me just quickly reduce the sound. And if I click it, we see that the music is playing. So what we can do is that we can try to track this audio player and see whether it is possible to track it at all. First of all, let's enable the preview and debug mode in Google Tag Manager and see what we have. So I go to Google Tag Manager, I enable the preview and debug mode. Then once you see the orange banner appear in the interface, then we will need to go to the website. So here it is. Then we go to the website and we refresh the page. So if GTM is installed correctly, we will see the preview and debug mode at the bottom of the screen. And here it is. So what we can do is that we can click the player and see if anything appears right away. And we see that the play button was clicked, but nothing occurred right here. So let's try to figure out what kind of tracking method can we use. First of all, I always recommend going to the built-in trigger functionality list in Google Tag Manager and see whether something is possible to use in a certain situation. So go to triggers, then click new, trigger configuration. And if you take a look, at least right now, as of the moment of the recording this video, there are no triggers related to audio players. That's why the default functionality will not work. We will need to use some custom functionality. And luckily, I have a blog post that explains how to track HTML5 audio players on your website. I will post a link to this blog post below the video. So once you open that guide, you should scroll down and keep looking for a code that looks like this. That is a code. And then you will need to add it to your Google Tag Manager container. But first, we need to check several requirements because this code does not work with all the audio players available online. It works only with a certain set of audio players. And you will find those requirements below that code in my blog post. The first requirement is that the audio player must not be in an iframe. So if we go to the website and if you just do the right click on the audio player inspect, and once you open the elements tab of your browser developer tools, you should expect that this element, this audio player element is not a child or let's say a descendant of any element that is an iframe. So in this case, we see that there are figure, div, 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 main, div, 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 and body. So no iframes are connected to this audio player. So that is a good thing. And if we go back to the blog post, you will see that another requirement is that the audio player must use the audio HTML element in the source code. So if we go back to the website, you will see that the player that I'm inspecting right now, it is actually using the audio HTML tags. So here is the opening tag, and this is the closing audio tag in the code. So this means that the solution that I'm going to show you in this video will actually work because my audio player is using the audio tags. It is not in the iframe. So let's go back to the article. You can once again, find that link to the article below the video, and you need to copy the entire code. So this is the code of the listener. This code activated on a page will be looking for audio players on the site. And if it finds them, then it will start listening to that audio player. So let's go to Google Tag Manager and create a new tag because every time you want to add a custom listener with Google Tag Manager, you need to create a tag. Go to tags, then new tag configuration and choose custom HTML tag. Paste the code and fire this code on DOM ready trigger click on triggering. And in your case, there's a chance that you don't have a DOM ready trigger, just like I do. So if you want to create a new trigger, you should click on the plus icon right here, trigger configuration, DOM ready, keep all DOM ready events. 
and then enter DOM ready. Save the trigger, then save the tag. I usually name it like this, HTML, which stands for custom HTML, and then audio listener. Save. Once you do that, refresh the preview and debug mode, then refresh the website where that audio player is embedded, and once again, reduce the sound a little. We can try to interact with this player. You click play, you click pause, and actually we see several events right here. So this information was pushed by the listener to the data layer. Click audio, you can go to the data layer and you see that here's the event, here's the action, and here is the file name of the audio file that uh, was played. So first I started playing the audio, so that is play. Then I listened to 10% of that audio file and then I clicked pause. So in this case, that would be cool to send all of these three events to Google Analytics. And we can most definitely do that. But first, we need to make this information accessible in the variables tab. Because right now, if we go to the variables tab, you will see that there are no variables related to audio player. And if they are not here, we cannot use them in our tags or triggers. Let's switch back to the data layer tab and let's create two data layer variables that will access this and this key in the data layer. First, let's start with the audio player action. Go to Google Tag Manager, Variables, click New in the User Defined Variable section, Variable Configuration, then Data Layer Variable, and enter Audio Player Action, Case Sensitive. Then let's name this variable, and then let's do the same thing with the second key in the Data Layer, which is Audio Title. If you want, you can also access this key, but in this example, I don't see the reason why I should do that. So go to Google Tag Manager, Variables, New, then Data Layer Variable, and enter Audio Title. Then save the variable. And when you do that, you should refresh the preview mode, then refresh the page, and try playing that audio file once again. Click, pause, then choose, let's say, the first event in the preview and debug mode, go to variables, and you will see that data layer variable returns play, and the other one returns the file name of that audio file. And the other variable returns the name of the audio file. So this is a good thing. Then what we need to do is that we want to use this event, this data layer push that contains the event key audio, we want to use that as a triggering condition because we want to fire a Google Analytics tag exactly when this event appears right here. So we need to go to Google Tag Manager, Triggers, New, then Trigger Configuration, choose Custom and enter Audio. Name the trigger, save it. And the final step is to send this data to Google Analytics as a Google Analytics event. That's why we should go to Google Tag Manager, Tags, click New, Tag Configuration, use Universal Analytics, then Event, and then in the category, you can enter, let's say, audio. In the action, you can enter the variable that you have created, which is DLV audio player action. Then instead of you know some static values, you will be sending values like play, pause, progress, and so on. So we need to click on this button and then enter DLV audio player action right here. And in the label, it would be also interesting to see what kind of uh, audio file was played. So we can insert the other variable that returns the title of the file. Then choose your G settings variable in the container. If you don't know what this variable is, I will post a link below the video to a guide that explains what this variable is. Then in the triggering section, choose the trigger that we have just created, which is custom audio, and then name the tag. Save the tag and then test the entire implementation. Refresh the preview mode first, then refresh the page where we are working on. At the same time, we should also go to the real-time reports of Google Analytics so that we could check whether that data is actually received and properly displayed by Google Analytics. So when you go to your GA, then go to events, and we'll see what we have there. So now let's interact with the player and see what happens. We play, then I pause. We see three events in total. So once again, this is 
play, then 10% progress and then pause. Then I go to tags and see that the tag is fired on every event. So this is exactly what we expect. And then if we go to analytics, you will see that there are three events, audio, 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 but their event actions are different. One is progress, the other one is pause and then play. Then after a while, but it might take up to 24, sometimes up to 48 hours. So once some time has passed, you will see these events in standard reports as well. You can find those reports in behavior, then events and overview, and you will see those events right here. But right now I haven't sent any events to this Google Analytics property, therefore I see nothing. But if you want to check today's data, you should also not forget to include today's data in the date picker as well, like this. Luckily, the data has been already processed because this is an empty property. So here are my audio events. Right now there are two events, so the third one will be processed fairly soon, but looks like everything is working properly. And that is how you track HTML5 embedded audio players on your website with Google Tag Manager. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up below the video. Yeah, I know that begging for likes always sucks, but that's just how YouTube algorithm works. So if this video helped you, you can help me by clicking that like button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel and helps me grow this channel. Also consider subscribing for more videos like this in the future. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I will see you in the next video.